Some developers seem to keep on switching tech stack because they hear about something that might be smarter or better in some ways and maybe it's also cheaper and they can save $5 here and $5 there. But is it really worth it? I've been using the same tech stack for years and it has helped me ship project after project fast. And the best part is it only cost me around $65 per month. Let me just take you through what I'm using and why. So let's start with the front end. On the front end, I use Next.js, which is built on top of React. And that gives me the flexibility and this kind of components based architecture that I like building with. And Next.js comes with built-in routing, which takes a little bit of time to get used to, but honestly, once you've done it once or twice, it's super easy. So for instance, if I want to make a new all listings page, for instance, I just go to the app folder and make a new folder that I call listings, for instance. And then within that new folder, I then make a page.ts and in the top, I then add the use server directive, which means that everything now happening on this page.ts will happen on the server. That is really nice because then, for instance, I can add my metadata object here. And then, of course, you usually then also make a client component that you then import into the page.ts. And on the client, that is then where you can use all these cool hooks like use effect and use ref. For styling, I always use Tailwind CSS because I just find it much faster to make styling changes using it. And it's honestly really hard to go back to not using it. And sometimes I then also pair it with Daisy UI, which is a library built on top of Tailwind CSS. And Daisy UI comes with a bunch of pre-built buttons, models, alerts, and so on. That is really nice and easy to use. And it also comes with, I think, 20 plus themes. So if I, for instance, want to go with a dark theme for a new project that I'm building, then it is super easy to use Daisy UI and then just switch on the dark themes so that I don't have to figure out myself what colors that match. I just go for a theme and then I'm ready to go basically. And now let's talk backend. And honestly, the cool thing about Next.js is that you now don't need anymore to make a separate backend. You have all the logic required within your Next.js project to make the backend right there in the same project. So what you basically do is that you just make all your endpoints and add them inside the API folder in your project. And for each endpoint, you just make a route.ts and then you basically just have all your routes there. And that is honestly really cool, at least I would say, because now I don't need to make all these separate backends that I used to do on Node.js. And I'm also saving that money now. And for cron jobs, I just add all of them into the Vercel.json file that I add in the root folder. And then I basically have a good overview there of all the times that my cron jobs are basically firing. For database, I usually use MongoDB and yes, a lot of people out there, they for some reason don't like MongoDB. I have no idea why, but I've honestly never had any issues with MongoDB. For me, it gives me the flexibility that I need and it's super easy to change something whenever I want to. And I then also use Mongoose to help with defining schemas and also to add validation. With MongoDB Compass, I really like that you get a good overview, first of all, of your database, but also it's super helpful when you are developing that you can very easily change something or add something. And it's also very helpful for debugging something. And whenever I start a new project, I then spin up a M0 cluster on MongoDB, which is free. And for some of my bigger projects, I add a backup plan, which costs me $10 a month, but I feel like that is totally worth it just in case something goes wrong. And when I want to code when I have no internet, like when I'm traveling or if I'm in a cafe where there's no Wi-Fi, for instance, I always use a local MongoDB instance on my machine, which works great. Now let's talk authentication and payments. So for authentication, I always use Clerk because it is supported by Next.js and it is super easy and quick to set up. So I feel like this is again, one of those areas where there's a lot of discussions going on. 
whether it's better to use next out or something else but for me to be honest Clerk works super well. It's very easy to set up, so that's why I'm using Clerk. It's also super easy to then set up OAuth for Facebook or Google or for X. It's basically just switching on a toggle and then you're ready to go. That said though, in production, you will still need to make a, a developer account on Facebook for instance, but Clerk, they have some good guides there that will take you through how to do it. So it's relatively easy to also do it in production mode. And it's also really good for magic links. And personally, I love using magic links instead of storing users' passwords in an encrypted way in your database. Using magic links is honestly just much easier and also much safer to use. So that is also super easy to use using Clerk. When you do start using Clerk, you do have to set up a webhook so that you are also storing all the user data, for instance, on your own database as well as on Clerk. But honestly, it takes less than 10 minutes to set this up. And by the way, Clerk is free for the first thousand users. And for testing locally, I always use ngrok for testing a webhook, for instance, and ngrok is also totally free to use. For payments, I always use Stripe and I use Stripe Connect for all my marketplaces and it does take a little bit of time to get to know Stripe, how it works and also how their API works. So for a normal project, which is not a marketplace, it is relatively easy to set up because all you need is to just choose if this is one-time payments or if it's subscription payments and then you need to set up a webhook to listen for that event that is being fired from Stripe after a successful payment, for instance. For marketplaces, it is more tricky because there you need to also allow a user to be able to sell as well as buying, right? So there you need to set up this whole user onboarding journey where you basically send first the user to Stripe to onboard him, where they add all their banking details so that they will be able to accept payments themselves so that you will basically just be the middleman in between the buyer and the seller. So that does require a little bit more setup time. But uh, yeah, then again, once you've done it once, it of course gets easier. And for hosting all my projects, I use Vercel. And Vercel is actually the company behind Next.js. So Vercel is a perfect partner to use here, I would say, together with GitHub and with Next.js. So basically how it works is that I've connected my GitHub account to Vercel. So that means that whenever I push some changes to GitHub, Vercel automatically listens for those changes and pulls them and basically deploys them on the live environment without me doing anything. So for this, I pay $20 a month, which I feel is a fair price for what they are helping me with. For emails, I use SendGrid and with SendGrid, I feel that it's very easy to set up transactional emails or any email journey that I want to set up. It is also very easy to add a new email sender within SendGrid and I can send up to 100 emails per day for free with SendGrid. If I receive an email from a customer regarding a small bug or something similar, I always go to Vercel's log area where I can see errors and API responses in production mode. So there they show it for 24 hours, which for me is usually okay and that is free to use. For analytics, I use Google Analytics and I set that up using Google Tag Manager and that lets me then track basic metrics like users, page views, bounce rate and all that basic stuff. Sometimes I also add custom events. So for instance, if I want to track the number of users that clicked on the checkout button, I sometimes also track that. And that I also do within Google Analytics. For SEO, I combine Google Search Console with a simple keyword tracker that is called SERP Robot that cost me $5 a month. And with SERP Robot, I can then add all the keywords that I want to track to see what I'm ranking on Google for these keywords. I track that because I know that if I manage to get in top 10 with one of my money keywords like MVP Marketplace, then I basically know that I will get many more customers. 
So that is why I'm doing it. And it's also very helpful whenever I make a change to one of my blog posts, for instance, then I can see if whatever I did actually made a difference in the SERPs. On some of my projects, I'm using Cloudinary for storing images as it basically just gives me more control and it can improve performance. And on the performance side, I don't manually set up a CDN because Vercel, Next.js and also Cloudinary actually does that for me so that all my users get a fast version of these sites delivered to them no matter where in the world they are. And by the way, Cloudinary also have a very good free tier, so that cost me nothing to use. And for the last category, let's call it the productivity and the AI category, I use Cursor for coding. It's basically like having a coding body right next to you, where I'm telling my body, do this, do this, do this, and my good body then does it for me. And what I really like with Cursor is also that they have the command K functionality. So if I just want to change a small thing within the component, for instance, I can just quickly just mark that area and then it basically just does that small thing for me. I do also still use ChatGPT, but now mainly for getting an overview or like if I'm starting a new project, then I'm using ChatGPT to give me the overview of what I should build, but then I'm using Cursor for actually building what I want to build. And for both Cursor and ChatGPT, I'm paying $20 a month. So that's it guys, and one thing you just have to remember is that nobody actually cares whatever stack you are using, especially not your end users. They just want whatever you've been building to work. So no matter what you choose, if you're using Ruby and Rails or Rust or Bootstrap instead of Tailwind, nobody cares. Just use whatever you are comfortable with using and then stick to it so that you can master it and become faster and faster and better and better at building whatever you are building. That's it guys, I hope that you found it somewhat interesting and if you have any questions, always just reach out to me or comment here in the comment section. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and you're also very welcome to subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next one. See you, bye bye, ciao.